Z. Ah, this thing is nice to have. Lorenzo got that fixed before. It's wireless too, which is nice. Just remember to turn it off when you're done with it. Some magnets on there, great for holding tools. Now we're cutting a tentacle arm and I want to find this edge of the board and set that as my zero. And I think I'm already there. It's not really my zero, my zero's over here, but this I know is 12 and a quarter inches across where the, where the pattern stops cutting. So this is a really nice trick. I'm using Mach 3 and I've already done this, so it's really close, 12.28. That should be 12.25 on this one because I know that's where this edge of my pattern is. So I gotta do is click in there and say 12.25 enter and now it thinks it's at 12.25, which it is. And the probe is lower than the cutting bit. I'm gonna raise it back up. I'm gonna test that probe. So I flip over to the diagnostic screen, push that button and I can see that digitized light coming on. So I know I'm working. Now it should be ready to go. Click start cycle. We're going to probe the board first, so i got to give it a probe file. Just any file it can store its numbers into. I'll replace the old one. And start, and it should start probing. I'm going to run my speed way down first, so that just in case it does something nuts, I'll have time to hit the escape button and stop that. Start cycle. Traveling across, everything's looking good. These red lines in the back are where it's going to do its probing. And when it gets over here, it should run a probe. There it goes. Touched off. All right, looking great. So now I'm gonna hit reset and bring my speed way up. I'm gonna continue doing its thing. And all it's doing is just finding how cupped, curved, warped this board is. So it'll cut this pattern exactly to this board. So if this board is leaning to one side or cupped a little bit or bowed one way or the other, this will calculate all that out. And this piece is gonna be half of the bifold door to the aft cabin's bathroom. I got it clamped at this end and just some weights on it at the other end. That little tiny bit is not going to put a lot of force on that. There's another reason why I can get by using this machine with a really long Z axis and not much stability out there on the tip because I'm only cutting oh, 20 thousandths at a time out of cedar. Now with the probe now, so if we can loosen this and raise the probe back up. We have little notches in the grooves here so that when we reposition the probe we can always put it back to the same location. And that's important because there's offsets here. It has to know how far it is from the cutting tip. And so the notches allow us to always put it down at the same depth. And with the probe by the way, we can start our cut. But I'm going to bring my speed way down again and start the cut process. And if I've piqued your interest about probing and you run Mach 3, Mach 4, or uh, Linux CNC, the program that to do that is free. It's called G-Code Ripper, and I highly recommend it. It's easy to use. You load your G-Code, you tell it what kind of grid you want to use. It's all under here on AutoPro, but all of this and how to hook up the probe is in our other video. A link to this and all the products we use are in the description. Well, better turn it on. We don't have a relay for that yet. Okay, it's looking good. So now that I like what it's doing, I can bring the speed up. I'm going to run this at 50%. Well, again, that long Z axis means we got to keep our speeds down. It's looking good. Now we go off and do something else for the rest of the day. You know, I don't get why people building home built machines try and make them run crazy fast like production machines in industry. It's like, it's not like you're putting out 20 units a day. You know, you're probably just doing one or two and then you're not going to run your machine for weeks. So uh, you ought to kind of think about the variables that are yours rather than the industry when you build something for yourself. Think about what you want, make it yours. And I think you'll be a lot happier with it. You'll also save a lot of money. You can see in the G-code that it's using the probe data. Every one of these pound symbols is a variable that's being read from the, uh, the table. And then you can see it's coming up with a mathematical formula to calculate these other variables. And then it's finally using that in a line to process the code. So it overrides the uh, pattern's normal V height and depth and adjusts a little bit for any distortion in the board. Oh, it's putting another test pattern.
just using polyester resin to seal the boards up. It's not the best sealer you can use, but it certainly is an economical one. It's level. So look at this level. Yeah, good enough for a boat. Well, it's doing it, barely, but it's doing it. With this high Z axis, you don't have a lot of torque out here on the end of the uh, cutting head. So it's cutting, but we're having to do it very, very slowly. One of the modifications we're thinking about is drilling holes down here so we can lower the uh, crossbar here for the Z axis, and that'll give it a lot more stability. Um, Lorenzo is also looking at using rails up here instead of these wheels. So there's all sorts of modifications you can do, but you can always just let it cut. I mean, it's doing it, it's on its own, it's doing fine. It's just slow. Probably the biggest problem we have is we just don't juggle two jobs at once very well. Oh yeah. Okay, there it is. Now it's just stuck in there right now. It, uh, it's a nice fit. I like it. A little unorthodox, but works well. Make sure I like the set oh. before I put the other screws in. Yeah, I don't know if I can improve on that at all. And I'm using pieces of a piano hinge. I bought a six foot long uh, stainless steel piano hinge. And that lets me put three screws in. The hardware store, you know, would have these little hinges with little tiny screws. And I just want something a little more durable and spread the load out since this is just cedar boards, which are soft. And yeah. All right. That looks good. Now I can put the rest of the screws in. Now if that's smoothed out, I'll put a little coat of resin over it tomorrow and I'll clear it up again. And I had to extend this floor down there because the uh, new toilets are a little bit bigger. They went and extended this base out so the pump's further away from the stool. That's kind of nice, but it doesn't fit the old one. So there, we'll mount that in there. Well, it took three times to get the hinges where they work and I like them. got a design flaw. The, the pin or the fulcrum is too far out of alignment with the force the door puts on. The door pushes right here, but that is offset to the pin so it wants to open it up. If I put the pin up here, the door doesn't have any reason to do that. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, that grabs it just like I want. Oh yeah, that's nice. So we just need to make a stop so it didn't come in any lower than right there. Beautiful. <laughs> I love it. strong enough or not, but if it's not, we'll just add another one. There it is. All we gotta do is let it dry now. Dragons and the octopus and the tentacles on the floor. In this bathroom, the woodworking's all done too. Time to do the plumbing. See the toilet's set, a nice seat to sit on. A uh, splash guard for the pipes. Great handholds while you're in the shower too because I mean you could if it's bad weather this is the shower to use. Then there's a splash guard underneath there. The whole floor can come out. It takes a little bit of doing but it can come out which is uh, something I just love for having on a boat. It just bugs me to no end to see boats that you can't get to everything down below and I want to be able to get to it you know without an axe. Simple and effective. Okay so what'd you make today? Take care guys.